Everybody connected to fashion and uh, women uh, business was for me the worst possible idea because I, I did I wanted to do anything possible except fashion. Welcome back to my huge channel. Today I want to talk with you about Prada and more especially about Mucha Prada, this insane woman behind this huge brand, uh, what she achieved uh, and most importantly what is the background of Mucha Prada and what did she actually want to achieve with this brand and what is exactly the fundamentals this brand is based on. So today we're going to talk about a little bit about Mucha Prada's background and afterwards you will be pretty surprised because I was and as some of you might know I'm a huge a little bit fanatic of uh, Mutual Prada you know not only the products and the brand but more like the woman behind this brand uh, and her achievements um, that really uh, inspire me and after you watch this video you will be like okay oh okay this is not the typical fashion design fashion lifestyle story so and maybe it will also change a little bit of your perspective you have on this brand so let's start right away so Miucha Prada or how she was actually named Maria Bianchi um, was born in 1949 and was later on adopted by her aunt so this is also why her name changed a little awkward starting right away but um, yeah so we start like very very early from 1913 where her granddad decided to open a shop which deals with leather luxury goods and handbags uh, especially for women and um, I mean it wasn't just a shop around the corner it was a damn store in Viterio Emanuele Due in Milan which is still like one of the most famous and beautiful uh, spots to shop so uh, he opened a shop there and was extremely successful uh, he did it together with his brother and yeah well their business was a success and the Prada brothers soon became uh, yeah, the official leather suppliers of the Royal House of Savoy which is pretty extreme I mean we're still in 1913 and um, well their boutique was as I said specialized in luxury products and they were able to survive the first world war which is also not that easy I mean who was interested in le uh, luxury goods in world war one not the good ones but anyway so um, well later on the brother of um, Mario departs and, and world war two comes and the business is still going well and despite popular belief um, Martino was not a huge fan of women working in his company so um, well after his brother left he had to, it was 1958 when he later on had to die he had to die he decided to um, yeah, do the business and continue with the business with his sons I think there were four but none of them was interested in uh, doing this job of dealing with this company and with luxury handbags and he had two other daughters left um, who were Luisa and Maria and Luisa who is the biological mother of Mucha Prada and as Luisa the biological mother of um, Mucha is getting into the company and working there it of course comes as no surprise that Mucha also gets kind of involved in this but what is pretty interesting here is that Mucha actually doesn't care at all about this company. It's not that she doesn't care about it and doesn't care about her granddad or anything. It's just that she is like extremely not interested in fashion. And that comes from the fact that her actual interest is totally politically. She actually studies politics and is extremely active when it comes to women's rights and protests on the street, is active in a left-wing communist party and is even writing articles in magazines and newspapers for them. So everything Young Mucha is actually thinking about is how to destroy patriarchy and um, change the system and the society we live in. She's a pretty young girl and I know we have all people uh, around us who were like active in the 70s etc but I think it's extremely distinct about Mucha being that much interested in politics and later on moving to fashion and you definitely see there the details 
um, and in her workmanship and everything she includes that she does see it from a different perspective. I think we can say that she doesn't see it from a that emotional perspective. Designers usually do see their collections. She definitely sees it from a way more practical perspective, which is in my opinion not worse or anything. I mean you can say that okay I want a designer to do it with enthusiasm and love and appreciation and everything, but she is actually thinking practical, not worse in any terms of design and in some interviews she says well she was never interested in, it, in going into fashion industry and I mean it was even the opposite she thought that the fashion industry is the worst industry to work in especially for women because it stands for everything she doesn't agree with again in terms of women how the people behave towards women how um, women are being regarded uh, in this industry and I think if we have a look at the 70s, 60s images of women we all know, I mean they were all super sweet, you know, we like the colors etc but it wasn't easy as a woman so it wasn't easy and she's definitely coming from a different mindset while designing so first of all she starts with the leather handbags um, she's coming into this company and they're most famous still for their handbags and as you all know she is the revolutionizing person to get to this nylon bag um, that was not very popular at that time in the 80s. Everybody was using leather handbags. So she was creating this very laborious and extremely hard to create pieces in a time when uh, not many girls were interested um, in these kind of handbags because leather was still like the epitome of pure luxury because there were handbags like Louis Vuitton etc who were it, way more famous just in terms of leather handbags. So later on she decided to design ready-to-wear clothing when she designed her very first ready-to-wear and in comparison to the other brands that were out there back then. Let's have a look at Versace, let's have a look at Armani, or let's have a look at, I don't know, Tom Ford's Gucci. It all was very naughty, I would say. It all was very sexy. It all was very, very feminine, uh, which is, of course, not bad. So Miucha had to fight the fight against this very extravagant, flamboyant, extraordinary brands, you know, these silks, etc., and come with her very, as we now call it, ugly chic clothing. So she starts with ready to wear. And in my opinion, she gets better and better. Of course, her first collection, I wasn't a big fan of it. And it wasn't a flop, but it wasn't good either. So it wasn't going very well for Prada in terms of designing, but she was improving. And uh, as she says, she's like, she is always saying, you know, I like an artistic view. I think artistry is important. I like a creative mind. But what is always most important to me is, is it practical? And what does this woman in this dress represent when she's wearing my dress that I have designed? But um, what is extremely interesting here is that she didn't only create pieces like artistry pieces like we are maybe used from Comme des Garçons etc. But there was still very fashion, very feminine and I think this is extremely important in the balance with Ralph Simmons right now. Um, that she brings a lot of femininity in. But it's always this clash she's working in. And I feel like this is the personal clash Mucha has with herself. She loves fashion, she's working in it, she is extremely successful with it, but she still has this very political fundament that she wants to stand on. And in one interview she even says, until a few years ago, she couldn't live with the fact that she's only working in fashion industry. And when they asked her, well, what else did you want to achieve? She was like, yeah, I wanted to be a politician. I wanted to work in politics. And I mean, how many designers are there that wanted to work in politics? I mean, not many. Um, and I just love it about her and I feel like she's giving you the vibe of also creating pieces for, I don't know how to call it, but her clothing always has for me a certain degree of sincerity and professionalism still and even though she's working extremely with clashes I mean you see it in her collections especially the 2012 collections the 2014 collections um, which are extremely clashy from her brogues her shoes she creates and then this very girly dresses 
you know, she's using inspiration that is very vulgar but at the same time it's simple, it's very subtle, sometimes it's even minimalist if we look at the knitwear and on the other hand it's still ugly and new and cool so it's always this clash she has in her mind in my opinion and another point that is extremely funny about her that you can also listen to in the interview that comes afterwards um, after the fall 21 women's wear collection uh, is uh, one of the architects is saying like yeah well what is for you mutual prada what is prada for you he says like a very important point of mutual prada is her behavior of disliking things and uh, as when they asked him like okay what is extremely interesting about people's way of disliking he's like well she can only like or dislike things and um, when she dislikes something she's always analyzing why she dislikes something and that is to me one of the most important points in life and this is even very psychological you know you know if you have to confront yourself every time with something or am i only looking at it from a very limited perspective because usually that's the case and if you're an empathetic person or an emotional person uh, you will be able to see things from that perspective so she always takes this something she dislikes and she's very certain about things that she dislikes so if you show her something and she doesn't like it, she will just say no, I don't like it, I don't want it first of all, and the second step is the analysis and dealing with yourself and your own psychology and um, with yourself and confronting yourself with this certain item and in, a very cool example about this is in one of her collections she uses lace and if you know Prada and the collections over the years you will have experienced that you cannot see a lot of lace in, in Prada design. So she has this lace thing and there's this collection only uh, mostly consisting of lace pieces. And um, well this is her, her way of dealing with contrasts and dislike and working with contradictions which is extremely inspiring to me because um, of course we have seen that often but I mean this is just something very distinct about Prada especially Mucha Prada that I think is extremely cool so this is also why I would say and I would claim that wearing Prada is always a political statement. I dream of uh, working on something more useful uh, so or political or anything else so a, business, a fashion business was really the worst for me at the moment because you have to know where she's coming from and what her personal statement was while designing ready to wear um, you see that her style is very practical she's also looking at the whole industry from a very strong businesswoman uh, perspective this is also the reason why there is no uh, genderless runway for example men's and women's like many designers do now and especially if you look at the last collections you will see that there are a lot of pieces that could very easily be integrated into the last men's wear collection very similar pieces so why do we actually need two different shows but but Prada also says like you know you have to see that from a business perspective if we only have one show we only have one highlight not two so from a marketing perspective two shows is of course way better than just one um, and this is also something I do not hear a lot of designers talk because designers usually just design they do not care about the business I Mutual mean, is like damn I need to sell this stuff a quick look on the show also because I still think it was an important collection what I realized again is um, it is a balanced collection you know you see the ref influence of course you know with the sleeves again like they saw showed in their uh, previous women's wear collection you see the coast that um, still could be Prada you see these very strong inspirations from um, your old school Prada with the fur coats the socks and the patterns are very Prada to me um, the problem is with being too balanced as I said is it good it, if both designers on, on their side um, make restrictions to create a symbiosis that is actually just consisting of two designers restricting themselves. I think it's a good collection for Ralph Simmons. So he had to fight with the femininity, so it was a bit like this manly edginess coming from Ralph Simmons, who was also very endogenous, and then the typical femininity of Prada, which is not typical femininity, so in my opinion, I do not know if we 
needed Revsiments here. In my opinion, it's getting worse. This collection was definitely the stronger one, but um, in terms of Prada history, it's not getting better. I also get it, Muta Prada, 71 years old, and she has two sons, but they're all both working in the, from the marketing part in the industry, so uh, they will not care too much about the design. So she needs something like a little stepson to um, kind of hand over the brand and uh, while well, Ralph Simmons is maybe the person for that, I don't know. So what I think is extremely interesting about this show in general, this is actually, this hasn't anything to do with Ralph Simmons um, especially, is how they deal with the fact of this virtual runway thing. You see this very strong connection between the show and the clothes and that it has a huge importance what kind of music is being chosen and if you watch the interview that came afterwards um, the musician is also talking and what I like a lot here is that you have the feeling to be able to see the collection from every perspective you see it from the back and the model is kind of getting farther away you see from perspectives you would never have been able to see it it feels like you're following the models kind of and it is so smooth that it feels like surreal also the set feels surreal we know that Ralph Simmons loves these kind of sets and landscapes and architecture he also did that at Gilsander and Dior and he loves it when it's just a room made out of one cloth or garment uh, personally I also love it I think it has an extremely strong effect on the clothes as well. Um, what's really hard here is that you really cannot just show the clothes that pass by. You have to put a lot more effort in everything. Um, you have this very laser focused mind uh, on the clothes. So what this all creates is also very more intimate and sensual feeling you have because you're following the single models. And I, this is something from a landscape creation aspect wise. A thing that I extremely honor and that I extremely loved about this collection. It's also, you know, a very architectural surrounding. You see that you have this architectural support in the show that pretty much is also needed for the clothes, in my opinion, to get the clothes what they mean. It's kind of like building this framework around this whole collection. So to sum this whole thing up and to understand what, what Prada is actually thinking is, despite having this artistic creation that is very important in general it is important to her to be able to design the most eccentric collection possible in the most wearable way and this is actually the beauty to me because i think it's easier to be very eccentric very extravagant very flamboyant extreme you know in any kind of manner if you do not have the re restrictions of how do I create a piece that is wearable for a consumer in daily life or in life in general. This is extremely hard and this is something Prada deals with and I do not see many brands do, dealing with that. They usually design and uh, decide for only one side. Either they just try to create wearable clothing, you know, like I don't know, Max Mara does or I don't know, many other brands, or they just create extreme things, you know, like the many young designers. And this is what makes Prada a very exceptional and extraordinary brand without being the craziest one amongst the designers that we see. She's the best one in balancing the craziness, the edginess, the extravagance and the subtle minimalism that is required for our daily life to make the clothes more wearable. And this is something I love about her and um, yeah. This is actually it and all I wanted to say. So if you watched my previous videos where I also talk about this kind of extremely necessary stuff, do not forget to subscribe and um, if you like my Instagram where I share a little bit more of my personal style, do not forget to follow me there. So yes. And um, yeah, see you to the next video. Uh, but at the end, uh, I think I, I like fashion and I like object and uh, and between different things that I will start doing, at the end I did it. And only a few years ago I realized that I, I completely accepted that uh, I wanted to do this work.